Hey up, Timmy from Bracken and I'm going to show you how to use our product Super Riso to create these wicked looking risograph prints in Adobe Photoshop. Now I've got a couple different examples here, we've got one which is dead quick and dirty, literally just a few clicks, you just bring it in, have a good click about and pick your colour and stuff. Then we've got another one with a bit more control, putting things in folders and groups, a bit like you would a real print piece, and then just some advanced tips and tricks in a third example. So without further ado, a top on it. So when you download Super ISO, you'll find there's four folders. You've got some instructions, the layer styles, which is the main meat of the product, actions, and these are complementary actions. They'll help set up your document, and they're not entirely necessary to create the actual effect, but we'll speak about them later, and a bonus paper texture. So we'll start off getting rip roaring by installing the layer styles into Photoshop, and you can usually just double click on the file itself, or you can right click, open with, and choose Photoshop or a surefire way, because sometimes this doesn't work with a Mac, is when you're in Photoshop, you go to Windows and Styles, and it might pop up on the right as one of these icons. It's the little FX icon here. And you can just drag that out, and it might be floating around if you've already popped it somewhere. If you just open that up, click on the menu top right, scroll down to Import Styles, go to wherever your files are, Either double click on it or just click on it and click load. And it'll just pop straight in there in the files. And here we have with the two folders, Inco Blazing Grain Type. And we'll just go into a little example and show you how to get crackalacking. So the quickest way to get a setup with Super ISO is just by loading in an image or a graphic and just going into the grain types in the Super ISO styles folder and just having a little play about. Having a good old click, you'll see that they straight away add texture and colour. And you can play with the different grain types, see what they've got, some more contrasted than others and a bit more detailed than others. And it's just a dead quick and dirty way to add a little bit of flavour to images especially. And then a dead easy way to make this a two colour print is just to duplicate the layer with Control or Command J. Then I'm just going to pick a different colour, pick yellow here and then invert that layer with Control or Command I. Then using my arrow keys with the move tool selected, I just nudge it to offset it slightly. And then the beauty of this is we can always go back and just change colour. So I've selected the other layer here and you can just rifle through this. It's non-destructive. It doesn't commit anything. And you can go through all these real authentic ink colours and just have a little play. And yeah, so that's quite a quick way to make a two coloured print here. I've just got one layer with one colour applied and then the other layer with an inverse copy with another colour applied. And you can just move them around, it can be quite drastic, have a subtle offset, do whatever you want. And that's a dead easy way to do it. And let's hop into more of a structured approach for our second example. Cool, so I'm just in Photoshop in a new document and I've just got these two smart objects. One is this type with this kind of little tag at the bottom and one is this smiley with this kind of transparent, kind of stylized globe pattern going on. And I've got both of these and just an empty at the bottom. So I'm actually just going to fill that with white and just name that white background. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually group all of these together. And I'm just going to call this color one. And I'm going to just go start clicking through the different layer styles. We have grain dirty and we'll start clicking. And we straight away start to get that texture and that authentic ink colour. So I'm going to pick grain fine and pick blue. Cool. So we'll see a few things here. We'll see that where the, if we just turn this effect on and off, with any grayscale values, we'll see that it's added this nice grain texture to it. But we'll see that we don't actually have any texture in the solids. So what we can do to do that is by using the ink overlays. So I'm going to, with this group selected, the group that just has our two smart objects and the white background, I'm just going to hit Control or Command G to make another group that this then sits in. I'm just going to call this ink overlay. And I'm going to stick with blue. So that I'm just going to, just for ease of use, I'm going to right click on that folder and select blue. And that's just going to make all those folders blue just so I know then when we're using other folders, I know what's what. So now I've got the ink overlay selected. I'm going to go into the ink overlays group 
in Super ISO and just have a click through. And so what this is doing is the the Super ISO effect underneath is affecting any gray values and giving you that realistic grain that you'd get. And then the ink overlays is just breaking up those solid colors and adding a little bit of texture. And as you'll see when you click through these, some add lots of lightness to it. Some are a bit more severe than others. Some add dark values. Some add a bit of a mixture of the two. Have a click through. There's no right or wrong one. You just click through and see what you like. Some have slightly different effects, like the misprinted rollers has these misprint looks on them. So I'm just going to stick with faded model there. Gives you just a lovely texture on those solid colors. That's in essence going to be our blue pass. And if we want to actually soften up these edges a little bit, we can go into our smart objects and just add a little bit of blur. Just a couple of pixels. Maybe do two pixels. That just adds a nice soft edge and gives you this lovely grainy edge. And we'll do just the same to the type. Maybe one pixel actually on both of those. Little top tip, if you've already added an effect to a smart object, you can always just double click on the name of the effect and it'll open up the window. I'll change that back to one. Cool. And so what's an important thing to note here is that we've, let's just turn these effects off and we'll see what we've got. We've got this black layer with this gray value, but the gray value is actually just transparent black as opposed to just a gray color. And if we didn't have this white background in the group here, when we apply the effect, let's just put a white background at the very back of everything, just so we have a bit of contrast. We'll see that the grain's not actually working. So we always need, if we've got any kind of alpha transparency or if we're playing around with blurs, so we want this blurred edge and we want the grain effect, we always need to put a white background at the bottom of the group. So the white background at the bottom of the group, and then anything above it with the super ISO applied on top. Dead easy. And then that's in another group with the ink overlay. And that's one color pass. And then for the other color pass, I'm just going to make a new layer. Make sure it's out of all of these groups. And I'm just going to add a, a brush here. I'm just going to brush it in black. One of these spray paint brushes. Well, that's outrageously big. Let's just pop it in like that. And then again, I'm going to create another layer below that. We're going to label this spray paint and label this white background and fill that with white. Just control or command D if, if white's my background color there. And then set them both and group them and call this color two. And I'm going to make this a pink color. So I'm just going to right click on that and go to reds the closest we've got just so I can tell. And then I'm going to just go back into grain type, grain type fine. So it matches the, we use grain type fine in the blue one. So just so they match and let's go for a fluoro pink. Cause that's a classic riser look. Cool. And Whenever you select these, it applies the color, applies the grain, and it also um, turns it to multiply to mimic that overprint look. So with this one, all we did was to get that kind of offset print look and make the type stand out a bit more, is I just command on the, um, over the thumbnail of the type layer, just control or command, click on that to select it. And then on that spray paint layer, I just click on the layer mask icon at the bottom here, click on that. Now that does the opposite of what I want. Uh, clips the spray paint to just the type, whereas I want the opposite of that. So I'm just gonna click on that layer mask and hit Control or Command I, that inverts it. And then when we put the blue back on, we'll see that we get the type in just blue. The smiley is in blue, but with pink overlaid and then pink is around it as well. And then again, we can just click on that color I'll group it. I want to call that ink overlay two. Make that red as well. And then again, just go into the ink overlays and select a nice one. So I'm going to select the same one. And then just to make sure no pattern is over the same spot, I'm just going to double click on the pattern overlay here and 
once that window's popped up, I'm just going to click on the artboard and drag, and you'll see that moves the texture around. And I'm just doing that to make sure that the texture on this isn't lining up directly with the texture on the blue one, so we get more variance, just adds a bit more of a natural look to it. And then if we want, well, then we always should. Risograph isn't really RISO unless there's a subtle little off print. It's the ironic thing with most print things is that the more perfect it is, then the less it looks like print. So we all want that gnarly little offset and the kind of misprinted textures, don't we? So easy way to do that is just select one of your color groups and just press V to select the move tool and just nudge it with my arrow keys on my keyboard. I'm just going down and right a couple of times here. And we get that lovely little offset, which shows the white and shows it over printing onto the pink there, which is just delightful. And the beauty with all this is that we can go back into those color groups and we can just pick different colors. We're not tied to anything. We can just click through. We can go into there and add any effects we want, like a levels or a curves. And we'll see the effect that has on the on the end look. And what we can actually do here is just go in and replace things. We can add live type. We can do whatever we want within these groups because we've built this in a way where we've got these groups as color passes. We can just kind of go into them after the fact and just add whatever we want. Again, that's outrageously large, that rush. So let's make that a bit smaller. Let's just pop that in there. Copy over that layer mask and delete that. And there we have it. And once you've set up the document and you've got your groups like this and they're different color, color passes and you've set it up almost like you would do a real risograph print, you know, you have your, you know, you'd send this off to print and you'd ask it for it in blue and it'd come out looking a bit like this. And then you'd have your second layer and you'd ask for this to get printed in fluoro pink and it'd come out looking a little bit like this and then when you overlay the two it wouldn't look like that <laughs> it'd look like that so once you start to use these layer styles and use the groups as kind of color passes then it's just dead easy to get that authentic look you can start to use it to proof prints that you want to actually get printed in real life so you can test it out in Photoshop first, see how it looks, see how the color combinations work, and then get it sent to the printers with, with these uh, color names, because these are all the actual correct color names. So you could ask the printer then, I'd like this in blue and this set uh, in fluoro pink, and it'd come out looking something like this. That's a good example of how to play about with getting up and running straight away. Sweet, so here's another example, a little bit more advanced, but still dead straightforward. We've got documents set up in pretty much the exact same way. We've got two groups here. We've got a red color pass and a green one. And where they intersect, you get that lovely secondary color, this kind of uh, muddy, browny, well, it's quite an unpleasant color, but looks pretty good here because it adds a lot of depth to the uh, shadows and the plants and stuff. So let's just dive in and see what we've got because there's a few little extra things with this one that we can take some tips and tricks off. We'll zoom into a 200%, it might get a little bit pixelated, but it will show it off a little bit better. We'll see that we've got the halftone effect on these. But what we'll find with the, if we just turn the red off and go onto the green, click on the color pass. Here we've got the halftones showing through here. And they'll show through on the kind of gray values of the layer. As we'll see here, we've got the kind of gray parts of the plant. When you click through the different, you know, we go to grain type, half tone, and we click through these. It changes the color, and we'll see that the half tones are always at this 45 degree angle. And with this one, with the red, we've actually changed that angle, so we get more of a natural look. Because when you print it with half tones, you'd always offset the different angles of, depending on how many different color passes you do, you offset the angles, because otherwise, if we were to select that red, and reset the angle by just reselecting red. We'll see we get this strange pattern where they're overlaying and they're a little bit offset and it, 
you get some strange looking patterns and a lot of details where there's actually white pixels and gaps because the halftone patterns are perfectly overlaying on top of each other. So what we would do to change that and add that angle is we just go into the pattern overlay in the layer style, double click on it and it'll bring up a window. And we just make sure on pattern overlay here and then on angle here, we just change this. And there's a lot of clever maths behind this and you can find articles. I'll put one in the description of the video about with different amounts of color passes, what angles you should set. But for this two color pass, an angle of 60 degrees looks pretty good. So I'm just going to set that to 60 and click OK. And that gives us that more natural look. We can see here the red is now off at a different angle to the green, which is here. So that just makes the colors bleed together a little bit better and gives it that more natural look. You see over here, you get that kind of moray pattern that you get in prints. So let's go to 100% and let's just show you in each of these layers what we've got and if we can pick up any little tips and tricks on the way. So we've got the red color pass. And if I just turn these effects off, we'll see what we've got in there. We've got this, let's turn the actual smart filters off the layers themselves. We've got this 3D render of a plant and it's been masked. So we've just got one of the plant and one of the pot. And that just means that we can edit them independently, change the values, and we're not changing the whole image itself. And so what I've done here is the first thing I've done is add a hue and saturation and just desaturate the layer. And that's because the Super ISO blending mode uses hard mix. And when you use hard mix on color layers, it gets a little bit funny and it starts to introduce uh, RGB values and not just black and white. And because we're recolorizing this to a solid single color, you start to get, if you were to do the opposite of this and really highly saturate it, you see that we start to get some kind of strange ghostly gray values, which we don't want. We want this to either be black or white, or in this case, red or white. So if it's ever got color in the render or image or whatever we're using, I just first thing I do is desaturate it. And then I've just put levels on these to independently affect them. And we can play with these when we've got both um, different colors overlaid on top of each other so we can see what they do. Because for this one, for example, I want the plants in the red layer to only really show up in the shadows because otherwise we start to get these dark leaves. So I want the, the, the leaves themselves of the plant to look green, but it's nice to have a bit of this red in the shadow to give you that, that darker color. And then with the pot, we've gone into the levels and just made sure that that's predominantly red by adjusting the levels. And then in the green, we've done the opposite with the pot. Basically, we've gone into the level. We've actually crushed these a bit. So it's not showing up in the pot in the middle. So the pot looks red and it's showing it up on these wooden slats. So you basically manipulate your different color passes so the color shows or doesn't show in areas that you want it to therefore when you overlay them together you know we've got predominantly green leaves and a predominantly red pot here with some nice uh, mixture of colors in between and like we did before we just pop them into another group called ink overlays with an ink overlay on top and then there's a subtle offset you see we've got a little bit of red here and a little bit of green here that's just done again by grabbing one of the groups and just subtly moving them. So there's a little bit of offset between the two. And then just pop in a paper texture on top of it all. So yeah, dead nice realistic result there. Using the half tones, some extra little tips and tricks like changing the angle of the pattern. But yeah, ends in a cool result. And now let's have a little look at the actions. Hey, just to show you a little quick rundown of what the actions that are involved. To install the actions, you can just much like the styles, go to Window and Actions, or look for this play icon, and then just go to the three clicks, load actions, and then navigate to where you saved it and load them. Much like the styles, pretty simple. I'm just going to use Document Setup, and I'm going to hit Play. And what this is going to do is it's just going to build up that folder structure that we built earlier in the other examples. 
So it's not going to uh, apply the effect to your layer or it's not going to kind of create the RISO effect. It's just setting up the document for you to do that yourself. So for example, let's just set that up and it's got two ink color groups with white backgrounds. And if you want to mimic that first example that we did, I can just put a version of that image into one of the groups and then alt click and copy it into the other group. And let's pick ink color one and select green and pick ink color two and select yellow and invert that image in the yellow one and just press V again to offset it. Now we can click on ink overlay, the top group, and in our layer styles, just click on an ink overlay. So the action has just placed this folder structure for us to easily be able to pop things in that group. It's already got the white background, and then we can just click on the ink color groups and apply our grain types, and then pink on, click on ink overlays and apply the ink overlay. So it just makes the initial setup dead quick, but it won't actually apply the effect onto your selected layer. We're in a 300 DPI document here. We've got an image, so I just selected it, and I'm just gonna pick a half tone, super ISO grain type, and the half tone patterns come in huge. If we were to look up here, we can just do rescale from, and we're just gonna do rescale from 300 DPI, a layer selected, Click on the action and click play. And that's going to rescale that half tone pattern to the correct scale. These are just little troubleshoot ones if you're in a document and when you're clicking through these and you'll see that if I change color or I click on other presets, it'll reset that scale and be large. And it does it with all these. It does it with the grains as well. This fine grain is supposed to be a very small grain. And you see here it's actually quite coarse and the rough grain comes out huge. So you just click on something and then you just do rescale from 300, click play, and it scales it correctly. So there you have it. Dead fun using them. Just clicking on your layers or your groups and clicking through the different grain types and getting that authentic color and the lovely, lovely little grains and the gray values. And then any solid colors, you just pop on a grain overlay on that and another group and you got it all. You got texture, it's non-destructive doesn't commit anything you can just if you've got live type in there you can highlight it change it again because i can't spell so that's a winner and yeah it's just really fun fun to make digital stuff fun to mock up physical print before you get it uh printed it's almost like a proof but yeah hope you enjoy it hope this is useful and yeah i shall see you soon hopefully and it's been a year since the last video so yeah, let's ignore that more of these videos and more tips and tricks and lovely textural goodness. But yeah, take it easy. See you in a bit.